So we're getting ready to go through the next mansion here in Newport. This is actually the very first mansion that was in the Newport area until the Vanderbilts built their mansion. So this is um, of the Gilded Age and um, I forget what year it was built, but this was the very first mansion um, in the Newport area. And so we're gonna go through this mansion and I'll show you some of the, or some of the um, inside. The grounds are absolutely beautiful. All kinds of huge, large trees. It's a circular drive. And when I say a circular drive, it's like probably a half mile drive um, throughout this area. So you can see in the distance, there's another mansion sitting right there. I'm not sure which one that is, but this is, um, this is absolutely gorgeous. This is the entrance to the chateau. And I can only imagine that people would come up this drive and as they come up the drive they would pull through this area right here, drop their car off, go in and have their lavish party. So let's go inside and check it out. Well, why thank you sir. Thank you. Enjoy. Very nice shirt you have today. Yes. It's very dark in here. It's a beautiful window. Mm -hmm. The carvings on the wall, it's so pretty. This is the fireplace. It's really awesome. Cool. So the China trade is the importing of goods like silk, spices, teas, fabric. All right, so right now we're standing in the drawing room, or as it was later known, the ballroom. So ballrooms were only coming into fashion in New York society in the late um, 1850s, and so in 1852, when this house was built, they didn't really have a function for a ballroom or see a need to have one. So by the time they realized they needed one or wanted one, I guess, they decided this was the best room in the house to be in. Because you're going to notice that this is pretty small to be a ballroom. If you've been to the Breakers or Rose Cliff or the Elms, you're going to see those massive ballrooms that were built to accommodate 400 people. So obviously we cannot fit 400 people in this room. Um, but this is 40 years before all of that. So they don't need to fit that many people in this ballroom. So just to put it in perspective, Mr. Berwin who built the Elms was only four years old when this house was built. So this is the perfect size for the Wetmore Social Circle, which would be the Kings from Kingsgo or the Bells from Isaac Bell House up the street. Originally the reception room, today this room is called the Green Salon. You can probably guess why. Yeah, so right now we're standing in the Great Hall. Welcome to it. So William Shepard Wetmore, the guy who built the house, he's going to die in 1862 and leave it to his son George, who was 16 years old at the time, as any 16-year-old would inherit a house like this, you know. So George gets the house at 16 years old, and his sister Annie is only 14 years old at this time. And so they each inherit $200,000 trust fund, which is the equivalent of $5 million in today's money. So takes them to the International Exhibition in Paris, which is kind of like the World's Fair. It has all the newest things in art, science, culture, all that jazz. So while they're there at this exhibition, his legal guardian, William Hoppin, who took him there, was one of the judges. So he introduced George to one of the other. Um, so we're standing 
standing in the library right now, welcome to it. So originally the dining room, today library, as you can see the books in here. Um, the thing that is so cool and unique and special about this library in particular is that it was designed by a world-renowned book carver by the name of Luigi Frellini from Florence, Italy. And so he was in huge demand during this time. Everybody wanted him to design the nautical theme here. The ceiling painting is by a Florentine artist by the name of Annabelle Gatti that seems of eating and drinking because this is a library. Not a library, this is a dining room, so it makes sense. And then the freezer on the outside is seashells, once again going with that nautical theme of Newport. The walls in this room, though, are Florentine leather stamped with silver and hand-painted. So at one time, the walls in this room would have gleamed just like the centerpiece you see on the table right here. And that would be just like in the ballroom slash drawing room to help reflect the light. Because the lights in this room would be like 90% less bright than what you're seeing right now. And just like the ballroom, most of the entertainment would be at night. So those walls would help set the ambiance and atmosphere of the room. And so obviously they have since tarnished, but um, it's still impressive to see even photo. The point of the photo was to show off the silver on the table, and you're going to notice that there's not really a lot of silver on the table. I love secret booze. Heading into the China pantry. China. All right, so right now we are standing in the China Pantry, obviously, welcome to it. And so on your right is going to be the dumb waiter, so that will bring the food up from the kitchens into this room through the secret door to the dining room, and then you're going to see the spiral staircase that goes all the way up to the servants' quarters. And so as you're climbing the ground staircase, if you need the railing, use the one on the left, because the rope on the right is from 1878, so, yeah. Heading into the bedroom. Four bedrooms. On the stairs, um, which you're going to call it G, which is basically a fancy word for burlap, so it came to look like a tapestry, so when you go back down the stairs, you can see this but this is George's bedroom as a child and as a teenager growing up. And so it has its original bed in here, the George Peabody <coughs> Wetmore monograms up there on the bed. Um, and all the bedrooms are going to have their original beds up here, and you're going to have to keep hearing me say it. chipping on the ceiling, but other than that, it's held up great. We get no sunlight in here once again, so helpful. Um, but this room's in the East Lake style, just like the Great Hall, so we have the um, naturalism, the vines, and the birds around the ceiling.
50 uh, rooms? As I said, this is the only full bathroom in the house with a toilet, a sink, and a bathtub. So the bathtub is porcelain, the toilet has an ashtray, just for everybody's convenience. And the floor in there is probably the most interesting part of the mm. bathroom. So the floor is made out of a material called gutta percha. And so gutta percha comes from a Malaysian tree sap. And what it's used for today is if you go to the dentist and get a root canal or a cavity filled, that's what's going in your tooth <laughs> as the filling. It also lines the inside of golf balls. 